So hello, I'm Jamie Balfour-Paul, stage name Jamie Gibberish, and I run a charity called Magic for Smiles, which believes in using magic for humanitarian objectives. Thank you so much to IBM for this uh, chance to do a video. It means a lot to me. And uh, on this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the charity and the benefits that we're trying to tap. There'll be lots of uh, pictures and videos, and it'll be a lot of fun, and I hope you'll enjoy it. So first up, we've got a clip from the BBC. My name is Jamie Balfour Paul. I'm a magician and I have a stage name Jamie Gibberish because I use a lot of magic language. I call myself a humanitarian magician. That means a magician that doesn't exist on a commercial basis, so magic for vulnerable children. I'm in the Bekaa Valley in a small camp for Syrian refugees. These kids suffer a lot from the trauma of war and stress in the camps. And what drives me is the smiles and happiness on the faces of those kids. I could see you, Angie, back. I've been an aid worker for about 30 years, but I always felt that I was missing a trick, as it were. How magic fits into the humanitarian sector. I think um, kids don't get enough support in play and having fun and things. There's a lot of emphasis on education, which is great, but this area of having fun seems to be marginalized. My vision for the future is for magic to be really integrated into humanitarian programming for vulnerable children. So before we get into the meat of the charity and the activities we do, I want to talk a little bit about the context. So we focus on refugees, refugee kids, and um, often the host communities. And uh, we focus on the Middle East, Turkey, Jordan, and Lebanon, but also since the COVID um, in the UK as well. So if you look at the slides, the focus is on refugees, as you can see, that's a camp in Lebanon. And I just want to give a quick breakdown of these four countries because they're the first three of the, uh, the highest per capita uh, refugee population in the world, although who knows about Afghanistan. So Lebanon, one in four is a refugee, Jordan, one in 10 is a refugee, Turkey, one in 20, and in the UK, by comparison, it's one in 3,300. And Syria, uh, just as a case study, before the war, 22 million population, and about half of them have been forced to flee their homes, six and a half million or so refugees, and six and a half million internally displaced. And then you can see pictures of the camps. Uh, those are camps in the middle of Lebanon, in the Bakar Valley on the left. And then on the right, you can see the hazards of electricity and water in the camps in Beirut. So, Magic for Smiles, what is it? We believe magic is a tool for the well-being and psychosocial support of vulnerable children, mostly traumatized uh, refugee kids. What do we mean by psychosocial? Psychosocial is a buzzword in the humanitarian world but it's about psychological support and healing alongside the rebuilding of social structures. So in order to uh, deliver this uh, impact on well-being, we do magic shows and we do magic workshops. We also do festivals and private events as a way to raise money. So going onto the slides, you can see we have examples of these shows that we do. One in Shatila Camp in Lebanon, one in Basmata School in Lebanon. Uh, moving to the online world, of course, we can do Syria now, a little bit where connections allow. And we'll just watch that video from uh, Idlib. I think I just showed you the online one of Idlib in Syria, which is a desperate place full of camps. Um, because of the, despite the connectivity problems, they have great fun, the kids. The, the magic is simple, as you can see, but they love it. So moving on, uh, some magic tuition pictures there. One in Lebanon, 
three cup challenge with the kids. One in Tel Abbas in North Lebanon, strings, and one from the UK actually, magic tuition. I mean, that, this gives an example of how much potential there is even in the UK. Are you happy? Yes, 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 yes. Finish the show. Finish the show. Yes. No, carry on, carry on. Carry on, please. Carry on. That's so good. One more, one more. Okay, we finished now, but we can do another show maybe. Okay, maybe. And also, uh, we do uh, lessons. If anyone wants to learn magic, we can do some yes. lessons. I do. Yes. I want to learn. I want. I want. I want. I want. Maybe. 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 And that picture of UK kids, they're Syrian refugees in the UK. I just showed that one to look at the potential of working with kids, refugee kids from Syria and elsewhere in the UK. Uh, obviously, they're a different standard, but uh, and they're, they're in English, not Arabic. Um, but anyway, they love it, as you can see. And then the last picture there is an example of a festival which is used to raise money. So back to me. So, the Magic for Smiles, we've done the what. What about the why? Why do we do it? Well, children have been robbed of their childhood through war and conflict. And so magic provides a chance for play and for having fun and for also addressing other aspects of childhood development. If you look at the next slide, it, it details the benefits that we're talking about. So on that slide, uh, entitled More Than Entertainment, you can see there are three main categories of benefits. We're, we're talking about emotional, Happiness and joy, de-stressing, overcoming boredom, hope. On the cognitive side, concentration, analysis, imagination, problem solving. On the social side, interaction, friendship, trust building, self-esteem, self-confidence and motivation. Those are all the benefits that we see uh, being imparted by magic on vulnerable children. And so we want to look at them one by one. So on the emotional side, you can see that a few pictures and videos to follow. On the emotional side, you've got one picture there of Lebanon, the kids are very happy. Another one, kids laughing. And then this one's from Turkey. <laughs> So there's the emotional. On the con cognitive side, we can see how the, the concentration is improved by magic. You can see the faces of those kids in Lebanon. They hadn't been to school before. And this was a real transformation experience in magic, as you can see. And then more concentration from more Syrian refugees in Lebanon. This is in Beirut. And this is in the desert in the middle of Lebanon. I mean, the kids had never seen anything like it. They were transfixed. Then on the cognitive side, imagination is stimulated by magic. You can see that little boy just transformed by looking into the magic box. And then all around the magic box, in a show I did in Beirut and Lebanon, you see where all the kids are, their imagination is triggered. And on the cognitive side, also analysis is stimulated. Kids talk about how the tricks are done for weeks and weeks afterwards, uh, maybe even years. And this one is in Jordan. And lastly, on the social side of benefits, interaction is the most common benefit. As you can see from that show in Lebanon, all the kids participating. And then a couple of video clips here. <laughs> Hello, 
So again, very simple magic, but uh, the kids love it and they interact in a way that is not normal. I mean, for these kids, they're often very traumatized and they don't interact a lot. And uh, this is a, way, a great way to stimulate them to interact. Again, this is a, actually a kindergarten, that's a primary. It's a mix of kids in a camp in Beirut, Lebanon. So I think they're pretty happy kids, wouldn't you agree? And finally, on the social side, uh, also trust building, using the needle through balloon, it's a very good uh, medium for talking about how to build trust and trusting in things so that the future will be okay. Finally, on the social side, self-confidence. This little girl was very shy and she would never interact. And um, standing up there performing with me was a day for self-confidence, boosting self self-confidence. Which brings us on to tuition. The tuition is all about uh, performance in the end. So we give a lot of emphasis on performance, minimum of two days, second day performance. And so then they can demonstrate the benefits in the, terms of their self-confidence. So we've got one clip here from a partner organization in Turkey after a couple of tuition workshops. Let's have a look at that. for solidarity with asylum seekers and migrants. Uh, today and also last week we had a great activity with the uh, Magic for Smile. We believe that through these activities, through such activities actually, beyond that, uh, the kids have a chance to develop their skills in self-confidence, self-esteem. So, that last slide of the Turkish kids, I mean, they were Turkish and Syrian kids mixed and uh, two days of workshops and they were having a lot of fun and you can see how they talk about self-confidence. So now to finish a few slides looking at the routines that we use and uh, I just want to make the point that the sort of routines we use are quite simple magic. Uh, the, the whole point is to get the sort of the notion of the impossible is possible and that the magic needs to be within the grasp of the kids. So there's not a lot of um, external materials that I bring in and it's uh, familiar objects as possible, things like newspapers, oranges. Um, let's have a list of the routines. Tornal was stored newspaper, astonishing bottle, eternal rings, cabinet stored rope, change bag, flower boxes, bagged happy birthday, sponge balls, paper tear hat, beacos, rabbits, sketch of magic, coin the can, cut orange, needle through balloon, paper swallow. Anyway, those are some of the routines and illustrating the point that it's wide range and not necessarily classical magic tricks of a kid's magician because the numbers of kids are so, so big and I don't like to say almost anything goes, but you know what I mean. And sometimes the, the tricks are suitable for younger kids and sometimes for older kids, so uh, adapt according to who's there. And often families are there as well, so some quite sophisticated card tricks sometimes. And on the tuition side, what are the kinds of uh, routines that we use? Uh, vanishing coin, coin drop, jumping bands, jumping jacks, 
Four aces, 21 cards, caps and balls, balance of dollar, three cap challenge. Again, fairly basic, but a very specific age group and what you can teach in, in the first day and then performance on the second day. So then, we've looked at the what and the why of Magic for Smiles. And now I want to look just a bit at the other actors out there where magic is being used for medical objectives or scientific objectives. The Science of Magic Association, Healing of Magic, Project Magic, Open Heart Magic, they're all US based, but that doesn't matter. Breathe, which is UK based. Then on the non-medical side, the charities, Magicians Without Borders, Magic Brothers World. And there are other cases like Imperial College as well. If anyone wants to go to the Science Magic Association on the 29th of August, uh, there's a seminar on, uh, online seminar on the benefits of magic. And they have a magic lab there. So to wrap up, I want to talk about some of the challenges and opportunities. The challenge is obviously funding, uh, because we depend on donations. We get very little time of grants. I'd say, however, the biggest novelty, but the biggest challenge is the novelty of magic still. M magic is a, as a tool for the well-being of vulnerable tra traumatized children. It's still a new idea and it's quite hard to integrate and promote within programming. So it tends to be one-off. But even the one-off um, is good for impact, but even the one-off sometimes is because people are just too busy. And the third thing is the kind of evidence-based. You have to demonstrate the benefits of magic so that people will take up the idea in their programming. And it's quite hard to do that without resources for a big research program and a partner to do that with us, which we haven't got. So we've got lots of anecdotal evidence and we've got the research piece on our website, the, ben the rationale uh, behind Magic for Smiles. So I think we're finished now. All that it remains for me to say is if anyone would like to donate or to promote Magic for Smiles to friends, neighbours, other actors, you're more than welcome. And the link for donation is provided here, justliving.com, Magic for Smiles. And uh, I'm sure we can circulate it uh, after you've seen this video. Thank you very much for watching.